Okay, so here we are, and here's how the garden project comes, or the garden tower comes. It comes in a box, and they ship it to you. Uh, I think it's, uh, what is it? Federal Express. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Federal Express. But here, when you open it up, it's kind of packed pretty neat. As you see, it's got the parts in here, and this is for the center tower. And what this is for is this is where you put your food scrap, your compost, and also the worms, you know, to make compost. And when it does, it kind of permeates out these holes right here. It kind of feeds your system, it kind of feeds it as you go along in the system. So that's a really neat deal. This will go in the center of the tower. So you kind of unpack these and put them out. And we'll show you what we do with those later because we make a slight modification to put the water system into these and we're going to show you that as we come along and show you how we develop the system. But one of the first things you come across is the directions and you want to read the directions before you do anything else, before you set it up. And uh, that probably goes out to most men because if you're like me, you put it together first and then read the directions. So, you got your tray for the bottom that will filter out some of the compost and some more of your center towers where your compost, your food scraps, and your worms go. So you see it's kind of packed pretty neat. And then you have the different tiers right here. So we're going to take these out. And these are where the plants go. So this is all pretty light and stacked upon each other. And then we're going to take the bottom out and show you the bottom. The bottom is kind of neat because it's mounted on bearings, and so we'll always be able to turn. So if you're half in shade, you know, you can come and turn this, and uh, the plants are in the shade, you can put them in the sun. It also comes with a drawer, as we saw. Legs that come in there, you got your three legs, and these play an important part of the uh, putting it in the water system, also, that we'll show you. And then you have your some tie wraps, and this is to tie the center tower to the outer part to support the center tower. We're going to show you that. We're also going to show you an additional way to support the tower that we do also for the watering system. So that's it. In a nutshell, all you got to do is put it together. You take these stack of the trays, you take them out one by one, and they fit in the holes nicely, as you see. And when they stack upon each other, that's where the plant goes. And after you fill it up, you put your soil in, you plant your plants along the side, of course, you have your aqua jet in the center that's going to water all the way around. And oh, by the way, you're only going to water for 15 seconds a day every other day. And that's if you're not using the water from there. So it's a great way to water the system, like I said, 15 seconds every other day. And we're going to show you that at the end of the video of what the water jets look like. So now let's get with developing the system for the Garden Tower project. Okay, so here's what we're done. We had, there's a few things that we had to accomplish. Uh, number one, uh, we put the tower on so we can get a reference, but we had to accomplish watering in a 360 degree circle, and we did that with three sticks. So each one is going to water 120 degrees. So now that we know uh, what we're going to water, as in 120 degrees, that gives us a chance to uh, identify what the angles need to be on the spray because it's, it's not just like your regular a vertical tree device that has to have a wider spray so what we did in order to cover the whole 120 degrees once we put this up we knew what angle we needed for the hole so we we're able to get that so now we needed to know how we're going to water on which levels and so we built the tower up like this right here and decided which levels that we're going to water on so now we're watering on three levels and that means that we're watering this whole tower all at one time and the watering cycle is only for 15 seconds every other day once you hydrate your soil. So now that we got that, we knew which level we needed the holes on, on the three levels, so we're able to identify that. And then we had to play around with the holes, so we shrunk the holes down just a little bit because you don't need much power because you don't have to reach out anymore. So these holes are a little bit different size than the regular AquaJet. So now that we've got that, we had to find out how to anchor it in place and found out that the best thing to do is after we built this tower because this comes in sections this is where you put your compost and your worms in order to uh, make compost and your worms are eating it up in order to kind of fertilize your soil as it goes you can see it has the holes for it to permeate out into the soil so that's a really good thing and what we had to do is we built this up and what we did was we tied each one together with the tie wrap to kind of hold it stable in place you know you don't have to do this because you can tie it at the top when you're done but it makes it a lot easier to do it this way 
So I took a tie wrap and, and locked this one to that one, this one to that one, this one to that one, just by going through a hole here and one of these holes there, and that was able to hold it stable. And then what I did was I cut out a notch in each one of these so that the vertical aqua jet can lay right up against the tower because that makes it a lot easier too. And then I just got a tie wrap on the top and the bottom to hold it in place and so you can get the right angles until we get the soil in. Then it's all about putting the half inch rubber pipe on now and we'll show you the finished product. But after we got that and was able to make the circle then we found out how we're going to feed the system. So now everything's a go. So all you have to do is put the aqua jet in hold it in place so you can get your angles right. Oh, and the right angles it turns out to be is over each leg. You got three legs there and they, those two are divided into 120 degree circles. So all you have to do is find the leg and you put the aqua jet right over it and it sprays right out at that leg. And then you come over to this one and it sprays right out at that leg. And then this one <clears throat> sprays out at the third leg. So now you know it, how to space the aqua jet. It's, there's no guesswork. You just go right over the legs, use them as a reference. Then I notched out, like I said, that right there so the aqua jet lays flat against the tower. All we have to do is put the rubber hoses on and it's good to go. So now we're going to show you the finished product and what it looks like, and that's this right here. Okay. Okay, so now you can see the difference of this one is we went ahead and we put these on because these uh, mount up and they go in the holes right there so they kind of fit together like a puzzle. And then we got the three tubes that come out and we connected those into a circle as you see right here. So the tube comes into a T, this one into a T, into a T. So you got the circle and you bring it around and you add another T right here and you see it come out and we added the ball valve right here so you can control the amount of spray that you want. Either full bore or kind of half blast like that. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to turn it on so you can see what it looks like while it runs. Okay, you'll notice that it's going to get a whole 360 degree circle there. Okay, as you see the water bouncing off the sides, which isn't going to happen when you have it with all your soil in. And so you're watering on the three levels with three sprays as you see them come out, but you're going to cut through the soil. So you're watering at this level, take care of that, this level right here and in this level and that takes care of the whole thing and like I say we're already way over so you only need the water for 15 seconds and then you shut it down and all the water is going to drain from the system pulling the oxygen in because we've got an inline anti-siphon valve right here that we put on it so now it's pulling the oxygen in and those three tubes are going to fill with oxygen and we turn the water on the next time that oxygen goes right in to the garden tower into what you're growing. So after you put your median in, your soil, you're going to put your plants out right here, and you're going to water 15 seconds every other day. So this is the Garden Tower project with the AquaJet irrigation system that we developed specially for the Garden Tower project. And for more information, you can go to our website. But we'll show you somewhat that we're building right now. This is what it looks like with plants in it. Of course, we still got a lot more to go, but we just put these in. And of course you can rotate it, as you see in case you're in the sun or whatnot. And we got the watering right here. So what we can do is we can come back and we can show you this and show you what it's like to water with the plants in it. And you'll see that. Well actually you can't see it because it's in the soil. All you're going to see is the soil getting damp. So. Okay, so we showed you the watering system, how we developed it and how it waters the garden tower the automatic watering system as it hooks up to the hose and the ring. And now it's time to talk about the garden tower and some of the cool things about that and why it works so well with the AquaJet. The first is the composting bin or the worm bin in the center where they have the patent and the only ones that have the patent on the worm composting bin and that's what we're going to do right now. So this first aspect that we want to show you is a way to make your own worm castings and your worm compost tea and we'll show you how to do that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to load it up with some of our composting material from last night. Okay. Some of our leafy greens and vegetables. Okay. Now as we put them down there, we're going to add some worms. 
to the equation. And set that down. And now we're going to add the worms. And what this is going to do, obviously, is going to make our worm casting because the worms are going to eat the compost and then they're going to poop out some good stuff and then the water runs through it and puts it into the bottom drawer where it's now got a lot of the nutrients in it and also if you remember the center tower had holes in it and this is a way for the nutrients to permeate out the worm castings and that to permeate out in the soil so you're amending your soil as you go with your composting material turning it into compost and worm castings so we're going to add some worms right here and let them do their work and then we just put the cap back on. Okay, and that's ready to go. So that's one of the coolest aspects of it is you're composting and you're getting your worms. Now another thing, as you see the color, the color is orange. This color is not only UV protectant from the sun, but the color itself is along the, the lines of the spectrum that it absorbs and reflects the heat the most. And this is important in keeping the soil cool so it's easier to grow in the summer, actually easier to grow all year round. And it also cools down at night. When it cools down, it absorbs that coolness and brings it in, so you're cooling down at night. So that goes along with the color right here and the UV protectant, so that's a really cool thing. So there's more to this than meets the eye. So you know, got the UV protectant, got the color, but it also spins, so you can turn it like that. In case you're on a balcony or something, you have to turn because half of it's in the shade, you want to get the other half in the sun. You got the BLT to turn because it's got these awesome ball bearings on the bottom and you could just spin it and it will go and go and go. And also the lifespan of this. The lifespan has got a really long lifespan because of the UV protectant, the way it fins off the rays. So 10 years at least you're looking at the garden tower to perform. I'm looking more like 20 if I'm around for 20 years. But anyhow, so you got some cool aspects of that. That's something that don't meet the eye that you need to know about. Then you fill it with your soil like we did here and you plant your plants. So what it does then is it keeps it cool because the farther that you go to the inside, the cooler that the soil gets. So you got an insulation going on. So you got the aqua jet watering from the inside out, but you got the farther you're going in, the insulation and the coolness because it stays really cool even up here in the upper desert when we're constantly over 100 degrees. Down here in the top of the soil, you go down three inches and it's only 62 degrees. So that's a really neat thing. Now let's talk about the water conservation because we've already talked about water conservation with the AquaJet, but now one of the other really cool things, and there's a couple things that are neat about this, is the watering drawer down here. So let me pull this out because I got it full here. And once you look at the color of that, kind of like a compost tea. Now that's what I was talking about when we're talking about recycling the nutrients. It's one of the most important things about growing. So not only do you have it keeping cool not only are you making your worm castings, but you're not losing the nutrients the way you do in a raised bed. Because when you water in a raised bed, that's washing the nutrients out on each watering cycle. And also you have the plants that are uptaking the nutrients. So you want to replace those, and this is a way to recycle because you're not losing them. What happens is when the AquaJet waters, the water goes down, taking the nutrients into this drawer. And then you take this drawer and you put it back in. So you're recycling the nutrients, and you're also recycling the water. So water conservation with the AquaJet, further conservation with the water, with the nutrients on the bottom drawer. So today, when I water later on, I'm just gonna use this drawer. I'll water some on top. I'll put some in the cups down there. I'll put it back. The next watering cycle will be with the AquaJet. Fill up the drawer again after that and just keep that going. So you're constantly recycling the water and the only water you're losing is to a little bit of evaporation and the plants that uptake it. Because remember, your plants are uptaking the water, losing it to trans evaporation. So you want to make sure that they're there to keep it cool. So this is a really neat thing about the garden tower. And I also want to show you the drawer over here on the top where you got the strainer. This is where the water goes through into the, water, into the bottom drawer and takes the nutrients, but you keep your compost in that from getting in there. Okay. So, for Rob, this is the AquaJet, this is the garden tower. As you see, we got a really good growth. Remember, we planted this on July 14th. This is only August 10th, so you're only looking at three weeks of growth from starters. And we're even growing lettuce in the upper desert, and the lettuce is staying really cool because of the cool temperature of the garden tower. It's a great project. Look for them at the Garden Tower Project or www.gardentowerproject.com. And you can also find information on the AquaJet, obviously at intelligentirrigationllc.com. So look up both for information 
and stay tuned for more videos on the AquaJet with the Garden Tower Project and the combination of both and why they both work so well together. So for Rob at Intelligent Irrigation and the Garden Tower Project, reminding you to water the intelligent way with the AquaJet.